hey, 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 TSSG family. Welcome to That Sunday School Girl channel. I'm Sylvia, and I am super delighted at the opportunity to walk through this week's lesson with you from suffering to glory. If you are new to the channel, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below, and also hit that bell so that you can receive all the notifications from That Sunday School Girl. And if you have been rocking with us week in and week out, we thank you. We ask that you go ahead and also hit that like button down below and share the video we ask that you go ahead and grab your bibles come on let's get in and get situated because we have another jam-packed lesson to unpack together uh, grab your pens uh, and your paper or your electronic notepads because i will also be providing scripture references to help you as you uh, continue studying the word this week amen if we are ready, we'll go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how, first and foremost, to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us as we went about the day today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your shooting armor protection, Lord, with that you covered us, Lord Jesus, as we got in our cars or wherever we had to go on today, Lord Jesus. We just thank you right now. We thank you for bringing us to this part of the day where we could come together to study your word, Lord Jesus. We ask that you you open up our hearts and open up our minds, Lord Jesus, as we draw closer to you, Lord, that we are in a diligent pursuit after you, Lord. And so we thank you for the opportunity. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come into this space on today, that you have your way, that everything that is said and done on today is pleasing in your sight. We'll be so careful to give you all the honor and praise for you, let alone are worthy. We ask these and all blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello to every one of you. Hello, to TSSG family. Hello, TSSG family. You're in the TSSG space. Well, hello, TSSG family. Okay, so let's get into it. Oops, sorry. Um, so um, the Bible basis. So again, the title of the lesson is From Suffering to Glory. The Bible scriptures that we'll be unpacking together is Isaiah 53 verses 5 through 8. And then we'll go to a New Testament uh, book of Luke chapter 24 verses 25 through 27 and also 44 through 47. And so in our time together, we'll be able to explore the story of Jesus's meeting, the two travelers travelers after his resurrection will be able to trust that we can find meaning in things that we don't understand through Christ. And then we can also be able to develop creative new ways to explain the meaning of Jesus's resurrection to others. Amen. And so when we think about the lesson um, from suffering to glory, when we think about suffering, um, Everyone has experienced some level of suffering, whether it was death of a family member, death of a friend, uh, getting sick, um, persecution, um, some type of suffering we've, we've all endured. Um, suffering is something, again, that is familiar to many of us. Um, we all go through difficult times when it's hard for us to understand what is what God is doing in those moments of suffering. Uh, we could be tempted to give up, lose hope, and even lose our faith in him. But for Christians, it's important to always have a biblical view of why God allows suffering and how we are to go through it. And as followers of Jesus, we get the opportunity to glorify God through our suffering until we meet him face to face and live forever with him. And so sometimes our perspective of suffering can be off. Sometimes we could be caught off guard because we don't know how to go through suffering or we're going through suffering the world's way and we're not going to the word to allow God to show us how we're to endure suffering and how we're to get through it. If you see, I read that part that um, I'll go back and read that sentence for Christians. It's important to have a 
have a biblical view of why God allows suffering and how we are to go through it. So that should be satisfying right there, through it. Suffering is temporal and we're going to go through it. And we have a savior that is going to go through it and lead us and guide us as we go through. Amen. And so oftentimes when we're suffering, we take our eyes off of the one who suffered for us and we fix it on what it is that we're going through. And it's important to have the right understanding of who God is and who we are. And without knowing who God is in his sovereignty, you'll get frustrated. You'll be mad at everybody. You'll be angry at the events that are going on in your life and even around the world, even things that don't have anything to do with you. You're going to be mad. But to develop a personal theology of suffering that is biblically based we have to look at the character and nature of God. And the Bible tells us, we, this is where we could have a whole laundry list of who God is when we start thinking about the nature and the characteristics of God. The Bible tells us that God is gracious, that God is merciful, that God is almighty, God is slow to anger, God is sovereign, he is loving, He's powerful. And we can go on and on with outlining or naming the nature and the characteristics of God. Amen. And so my prayer as I was studying this lesson is that we change our our outlook on suffering. One, again, we know that suffering is going to happen. We, um, again, know that we probably all have experienced some level of suffering. Someone may be coming out of a period of suffering. Someone may be getting prepared to go into a period of suffering. Amen. And so what this lesson is teaching us is how to endure, why, not only endurance while we're suffering, but giving God the glory through it all. Amen. Through it all. And so let's go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and open up with the scripture and then we'll go back and we'll unpack, unpack the scripture. So I'll start off with reading Isaiah 53, five through eight. But he was pierced. And this is excuse me. This is the New Living Translation. And the word reads, but he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shears, He did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. And Luke 24, verses 25 through 27 and 44 through 47, again, the New Living Translation, and the word reads, Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets explaining from all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. 
It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sin for all who repent. Amen. And so the first section that we'll look at is understanding comes through having a heart of faith. Again, understanding comes through having a heart of faith. And scripture reference is Luke 24, verses 25 through 26 and verse 44. And we see here in the text that these letters are in red. So we know that these were words spoken by Jesus. And so Jesus had rebuked the disciples for not having hearts of faith. And even after he had appeared to them, they still didn't believe. Uh, Faith is defined um, as a strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. In the word, if we go to Hebrews 11 verse 1, and this is King James Version, it reads, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if we drop down to verse six of that same book and chapter, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. And so in the ancient times, when you think about the heart posture, Um, The heart was the seat of both emotions and cognition. So it was central to a person's whole being. Um, I often tell people everything starts, everything's in the heart. That's the center of who you are. Everything that's in the outside, or excuse me, everything on the inside will eventually shows up on the outside. So whatever's in your heart is going to show up on the outside. Amen. And when you think about your heart posture, You don't want to create a hardened heart because if you think of a hardened heart, think about a fist and with the fist it's so tight that there's nothing coming in, nor is there anything going out. And so when you think about your relationship to God, and again, you can be open and honest and you can ask God, do you have the right heart posture when you come to him? when you're seeking him, when you're drawing closer to him, you want to make sure that your heart posture is right. And so Jesus had told them that the problem, uh, that the problem with their belief was more in their heart than it was in their head. And so again, we often think that the main obstacle to belief are that they're in our head, but they're actually in our heart. Because we can, we could think one thing and we could change it and think another. So that's why it's so important to, again, do a heart check. Do a heart check and and go to God humbly asking, is my heart right? And if it's not, again, we could go to God and ask, search my heart. Pull out, go into the cracks and crevices Uh, Go into the parts and places that I've suppressed over the years and create in me a clean heart. And our father will do it. Amen. So you don't have to walk around with the old stony heart that God is there waiting for you to release it into his hands. He's the most capable to, to be able to deal and to handle it. And to love you and guide you along the way. Amen. So in, in, in our pursuit and diligence, diligently seeking God, always asking, clean my heart. I want my heart to be right. Because if my heart is right, then my eyes, my perspective will be right. That my heart would, would see people and I won't get caught up in what my eyes see in people. Amen. And so, again, they, uh, they being the disciples, should have believed what all the prophets had spoken, that the Messiah would suffer first and then be received in glory. 
And so there's even examples uh, in the scripture. Um, if you was to go to Isaiah 50 uh, verses five through seven was an example of what the prophets were telling them of what they weren't believing or what they uh, that they knew, but they just weren't believing. And so the Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint and I know that I will not be ashamed. And then again in Daniel, another example, chapter 9, verse 26, the Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And a, a, a third example would be Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 12, verses 10. Again, another example, they will look on me whom they pierce. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. Amen. So when we look at another section of understanding, because we want to enhance our understanding when we read the word, we want to under, we want to enhance our understanding again, known as we diligently seek the Lord, that we want the wisdom and the understanding and so the next section would be understanding comes through a relationship with Jesus, a relationship, not somebody I heard about, not somebody that I hear people talking about a relationship with him. And scripture reference for this uh, section would be Luke 24, verse 27 and verse 45. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so Jesus emphasized his relationship with his disciples when he explained his resurrection to the 12. He stated that he has spoken what he has spoken, excuse me, concerning his death and resurrection while he was still with them. He again, he could have simply said, I told y'all, but he didn't take that approach. So during his time with them, Jesus had let them know that he was going to suffer, die and rise on the third day. They had inside information. And now the things that Jesus told them had been fulfilled right before their very eyes. And so he already told them what was to come. They could have already expected that. But again, when your heart isn't in the right, uh, in the right position, and or if your mind is fixed on a certain thing or how something is going to happen that you'll miss it because you've made up in your mind what something is going to look like, what is going to feel like, how it's going to happen. Like you, you've already answered all these questions where God is like, I'm going to figure all that out. I'm in the details. And so Jesus, again, he began to teach them what was surely one of the most spectacular Bible studies ever taught. Beginning in Moses and all the prophets, he told them all about the Messiah. And so we could look from Old Testament scriptures all the way to New Testament of who the Messiah was. He was the blessing of Abraham to all nations. And I have a list of them here. I'm going to just go ahead and read, share a few of them. He was the Passover lamb. He was the lion of the tribe of Judah. He was the ultimate kinsman redeemer mentioned in Ruth. He was the son of David who was a king greater than David. The good shepherd in Psalm 23. The savior described in the prophets and the suffering servant of Isaiah 53, which is in our text today. And so again, he was telling them who the Messiah was. And so the Savior who knows the word of God perfectly because of his intimate union with the spirit, who is his primary author, expounded to them and broad outline all the scriptures that referred to him from the first books of the Old Testament and right through to the end. 
And so what you see here is that God was patient. He was patient. Jesus was patient with them. Again, walking alongside them to let them know, like, I've, I've told you these things and you know these things. However, I'm going to take the time to show you again because I want you to get it. I want you to understand it because just think about your personal walk with, with Christ that when you get it, you don't get it just to get it, but you get it and you understand it. And there's an action. There's a response to it because when you understand who God is, and again, I, I going back to the nature and the character of who he is, then you start walking different. You start talking different. You start showing up different, bold and confident because you know who your father is. Amen. And it's no different that in periods of suffering and, and no, no different than when we uh, know people that are suffering, that we can still have that same confidence that even though something is going on around us, that we could still be content in this situation, that we don't have to be moved by what is going on around us because we have the one and only that suffered everything. And so even when you find yourself saying, well, no one knows what I'm going through. Yes, no one here on earth knows what you're going through. However, our father knows exactly what you're going through. And so that's who we're running to when we're going through things, when we're met with trials and tribulations that we can run to our father and he knows exactly what we need to help us get through it. Amen. The next section is understanding comes through the scriptures and scripture reference for this is Luke 24, 46. And then now we're about to get into Isaiah, Isaiah 53, five and eight. And so I wanted you uh, to just do, a, do do me a favor as we're as we've been studying together. I want to reread Isaiah 53, 5 and 8. And as I'm reading, I want you, if you want, you can close your eyes, but make make it personal. Sometimes we read the scripture, but we also have to allow time to, to let it simmer. And so Make it personal because this is what Jesus did for you and what he did for me and what he did for whomever, whomever wants to draw closer to him. Amen. And so, uh, and re rereading Isaiah 53 verses five through eight, it reads, but he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of all of us. He was oppressed and treated harshly. Yet he was never, he, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream, but he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. Amen. So the scriptures are central for our understanding when life brings us sorrow and disappointment. It's important that we go to the word to be reminded of what God said. The scripture provides insight into our situations and gives us hope, the hope that we need in troubling times. Amen. Because there's times where we may have found ourselves ready to throw in the towel, ready to just give up and just move on to the next thing, whatever that was. We just knew it wasn't what we were going through. But our God is so gracious and so merciful and loving that I always, uh, I always say he throws the towel back because what he wants you to do is wipe, wipe your tears, wipe your face, wipe, wipe your, your brow 
wipe your knees, dust off your knees because he's the assurance that we need that he's there with us. Good times, he's there. Troubling times, he is there. When we feel or we can't feel that he is there, know that he is still there. Amen. And so, again, being able to go back to the word, being able to go back to the scripture is where we'll find our strength, is what will give us and allow us to keep hope. And through God and through his word, he will strengthen us. We will get through it. And sometimes you have to tell yourself that I'm going to get through this. And again, you don't have to get caught up in, I don't know how, I don't know when. Don't worry about none of that. Just know that with God, you will get through. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me, let me get back. Let me get back. I have so many notes like this, <laughs> this lesson is, is, is a great lesson. Um, okay. So then let me see, let me see. Um, at this point, the prophet does not, um, have in mind. Oh, so where it says, surely he was born our griefs and our carried our sins. So again, when we think about what God did for us, what Jesus did for us, and he never said a mumbling word. Never said a word because he was being obedient to his father, the assignment that his father gave him. So he never said a mumbling word. And when we think about. When we think about that. That he didn't do anything. He didn't sin. It was us. He did it for us. And when you think about why the disciples, why they couldn't make that connection. And the reason why is because he did it for us. By his stripes, we are healed. He was bruised for our transgressions, our iniquities, our waywardness, our wickedness, our sin. He took on all of that. And sometimes you have to think of how many people are carrying around pain, grief, sorrow that Jesus carried for us. He took that for us. And for it to do us any good, we have to be ready to release it. Amen? We have to be able to release what we've been carrying around for years and we've just adjusted. But God is ready and waiting. He's waiting for us to release it to him. And again, whatever that looks like, write a list, tear it up, say it in the mirror to yourself. But whatever you got to do is to release it because uh, what God is also doing is he's making room for more. He want he want to get he want to get the things out of you, the suffering and the pain and the guilt, the shame. He want to get all that out of you because he got so much more ready for you. He's waiting on you. Amen. So what Christians, what we must do is pray boldly and trust God's goodness and mercy and granting gifts of healing now even before the ultimate healing of the resurrection. And so again, remembering by his stripes, we are healed. And so he gets the glory out of everything. Um, I do want to get to this last section. So the last section that I wanted to go over is understanding comes through being aligned with God's purpose. And this is Luke 24 verse 47 and again these words are also in red so we know that these were words spoken by Jesus and so the disciples had a choice when Jesus appeared to them they could either hold on to their thoughts ideas of what they expected the Messiah to be and do or they could align themselves with God's purpose for the Messiah their understanding needed to be expanded to go beyond their selfish desires to the loving purpose of God. And this was the time to align with God's purpose by preaching repentance and remission of sin, sins among all the nations. And as a result, 
This will be a sure telltale sign that they understood the true purpose of the Messiah's coming. And so he said in the word that it will start in Jerusalem. And so we know Jerusalem is the holy city and it is the place where Jesus was arrested, crucified and resurrected. But the message of God in Jesus's death and resurrection is not contained within the holy city, but must be spread to all the nations. Amen. And so again, in uh, looking at the uh, this this text, there there's so much to pull from it because even in Isaiah alone, um, we can see the messianic messianic excuse me prophecy that was declared by Isaiah in chapter fifty three, and then we can also see where in the text it was fulfilled by Jesus. And so that's also in the notes there. There's that outline there of those references so that you can see what was pro what was declared by Isaiah and where Jesus fulfilled the prophecy. Amen. And again, Jesus, uh, he wanted them to understand that the cross was not some unfortunate obstacle that had to be hurdled. It was necessary. It was a necessary part of God's redemptive redemptive plan for man. And that it would be in the name of a crucified and risen savior that repentance and remission of sins will be brought to the world. And so, again, I thank you. Uh, I thank you for our time together. Uh, this lesson, I, I do encourage you <laughs> to go back. It was so much um, to get from this lesson. But again, I want to encourage you that even in suffering, God gets the glory. Even, even when trials and tribulations are going to come, because they're they'll come. He told us in his word, so we shouldn't be caught off guard and we shouldn't be surprised that we will endure trials and tribulations. We will endure seasons. We don't get to control when they come, how long they last, how they'll affect me, how I'll change. However, we have confidence. And we have trust and we have hope in the one who suffered it all for us. Amen. And so, again, I encourage you that uh, whatever you find yourself up against, go to the word. Go to the word and allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you as to what the word is saying in regards to your situation. Again, I thank you for our time together. Uh, let's go ahead and have a moment. Let's close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how, first and foremost, to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, again for our time together. Thank you, Lord, uh, that you suffered it all for us, Lord Jesus that you didn't say a mumbling word, Lord Jesus, that you took on all of our sins and transgressions and iniquities, Lord Jesus. And we thank you right now, Father. We ask that you open up our hearts, Lord Jesus, that you prick our hearts, Lord Jesus, that you help us to remove anything in us that is an obstacle or a distraction, Lord Jesus, from running after you, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you remove it now. Lord, we just thank you again for our time together. We pray that everything that was said and done was pleasing in your sight. We'll be so careful to give you all the honor and praise for you, let alone our worthy. We ask these and all blessings in Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, family. Until next time, be blessed. Thank you so much for sharing in this space with us today. If this ministry has blessed you in any way, I invite you to consider sharing a small gift of just $3 with us. You can do so by scanning one of the QR codes on the screen. And please don't forget, we are waiting for you to join us over in the TSSG Connect. You can see all the benefits here on the screen, and we look forward to serving you in a more personal way. Have you had an opportunity to visit our amazing swag shop? Stop by and check out great items for Sunday school and church school. T-shirts, pouches, mugs, and so much more. Find something that you'll enjoy or something for your favorite teacher. Changing the way you see Sunday school with that sun.